No fucking right. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so look, we got some more adroit theory. Uh, this one is uh, Dia de los Muertos, Russian Imperial Stout. We got this uh, wonderful artwork right here. Just wonderful. <clears throat> really dark, um, as per usual. Looks like we got 13.7%. Did not see that before I grabbed it. Um, what I like about a Troy theory is that they got food, cheese, and cigar pairing um, recommendations right there. It says, There is a place where the restless souls wander. Burdened by the weight of their own sadness, they cannot enter heaven. So they wait, trapped between our world and the next, searching for a way to rid themselves of their pain. In, hope, in the hope that somehow, someday, they will be reunited with the ones they love. And that is um, their Ghost 931 um, Dia de los Muertos Stout. So let's crack this open, see what it's all about inside here. And got my glass off to the side. Let's pour it up. There we go. Very dark, as expected. No light. <laughs> no light is coming through there. Oh, man, that smells good. It's thick. It's chewy. It's got a little bit of that kind of roasty... Um, bitterness kind of like black coffee um, and then there's this kind of like like um, was it like burnt caramel burnt burnt sugar type taste um, very nice like dark sweetness maybe <clears throat> maybe just faint dark fruits but the you know, overall accord very nice very nice It's not too hot either for being like almost 14%. I don't really feel like a whole lot of heat in my chest. That's good shit. All right, guys. So this is going to be a mail call slash I'm going to show you something that's been in the works for a fucking hot minute. <clears throat> so a while back um, when I was, uh, I signed up on somebody's custom brush list and I was thinking of ideas of what to do for my uh, custom brush. And so basically I was I was thinking of things um, and concepts to pull from and things like this. And then I thought, you know, it would be cool if I had like, like a series of brushes that kind of uh, told a story or something like that. Or, um, you know, were a part of a story type deal. Anyways... <clears throat> One of the inspirations that I came across was um, the Four Horsemen, uh, like the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. And so this really resonated with me. I started doing research. I was on Google and fucking trying to find different things about uh, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. And so one thing that um, what I, I, I kind of knew that I was going to be able to make this work because each horseman had defining characteristics and things like this. And so I clung to this and then I just kind of played the waiting game. The brush that I got made from that maker on that waiting list turned out to be something else. It was separate. But the thought of the four horsemen shaving brushes remained. So what I did was I kind of waited in slumber until I saw a brush that kind of fit the bill of one of the horsemen. And I was like, okay. I was like, I gotta have that brush. I was kind of wanting this whole series to be custom. Um, but when I saw it, I was like, that's the first time that's ever been done. And so I want to fucking, I want to pick that up, you know. Anyways, introducing horseman number one. Uh, the horseman, the first horseman to arrive on the scene was Conquest, and Conquest arrived on a white horse, and so he was wearing a crown, and um, those are kind of like, I, I, I chose the horses, the color of horse 
to kind of represent the color of the brush. And so, and then I took other defining characteristics and tried to make it um, fit into the theme of the brush. So, insert Conquest. Lancaster Razor Works. When they came out with this beauty right here, I mean, you've seen it many times on my channel, but when they came out with this beauty right here, with this um, very unique triple flute design, I'd never seen anything like that before. It's uh, it's one note, it's just white, and but it has this um, really classy shape to it. And this right here, when I first saw it, I was like, that's the crown. It's the white horse, it has the crown, and I was like, son of a bitch, you know? I was like, that's the conquest brush. I was like, son of a bitch. And I had to have it, I jumped right on there, I was on time, got the fucking brush, and I couldn't have been more thrilled. And it, it turned out to be a fucking blessing, because this is my favorite badger knot in my whole collection, this uh, Lancaster V1, just by coincidence. Um, so it was a fucking blessing. I love this brush. Um, I love the, like, the shape, the aesthetics, the knot on it, everything. So... Horseman number one, the first horseman on the scene, is Conquest. So there we go. Arrived on the white horse. Uh, next, after Conquest, was uh, War. And so War arrived on uh, a red horse. And so I, I'm, I love black and red. Um, that's my thing, obviously. <laughs> You guys watch my channel, you see black and red all the time. Um, but War arrived on a red horse, and so when I got to uh, working on a custom, I was like, it's got to have red in it. Uh, I obviously, I like white and red, I like black and red, but I kind of wanted to merge them in one thing. And I had to really butt heads with the artisan to get this done. But as per usual, I usually impose my will on the poor artisan. I get my way. <laughs> and um, I, uh, so I got this next one here. So enter war on the red horse from Wolf Whiskers. And so as you can already see, the black and red theme going on. And so let's just move it up here. <laughs> so we got the black and red uh, swirl on the bottom uh, with a just plain red divider and then a white and red swirl on top. This is where the majority of the issues came from was the white and red swirl. Um, the artisan told me it could not be done and I had to offer to pay. I, I basically said, what, no matter what the result is, I'll pay for it. You fuck it up, the whole thing turns pink and mixes together, I'll pay for it. So I basically had to put everything on the line to get him to take the risk and it, it turned out it turned out perfect I mean it turned out fucking perfect and then I topped it off with this red um, blood knot and we got war horseman number two war and so beautiful brush beautiful beautiful brush um, that handle obviously has a lot of fucking a lot going on and I'm sure it took a lot of work, and I'm just super thrilled that Peter did that for me, you know. He didn't have to, but I did uh, <laughs> kind of impose my will on him. Mm. Okay. Next up. So, next after war arrives death. So, we all, uh, we all know death. Death is pretty popular out of the horseman, the Grim Reaper, all this jazz. Um, so death arrived on a pale horse. Now, a lot of people depict the pale horse as a pale green horse. And you also see death or the Grim Reaper depicted a lot in like a black cloak. And then like a lime green, or not a lime green, like a pale green, um, aura around him. And so I, uh, I took this idea of the black and the um, pale green, and I approached um, Andre with my thoughts. Andre quickly shut me down. 
um, and told me, I, I don't do customs. He, he said, if I do it for you, I got to do it for everybody. I don't do customs. And that was that. I was like, well, fuck, you know. Um, I don't know if he stewed it over or what the deal was. Um, me and Andre have worked to a friendship. Like, we, I've been a huge fan of his products. We've had a lot of back and forth. So we got closer and we formed a friendship through the wet shaving hobby. And he basically told me, you know, I don't do customs, but I have done a gift or two in the past. And so he said, you know, I'll make a brush for you as a gift. I don't do customs, so this is a gift from me to you. I was thrilled. I was floored. Um, but I didn't approach the situation any different than a custom. <laughs> I, uh, I basically told him, I want death. You know, I want death from the uh, Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. I want pale green um, and mixed with black. I want it to be slender like um, the Grim Reaper. You know, you always see like this slender figure with the scythe and the cloak. And so I was like, I want this one to be kind of tall and slender and um, to kind of recreate that like slender body uh, and then the cloak on top. Um, but I also wanted something a little bit out of the box, like something that had never been done before on a shaving brush. And I wanted flutes up on the top. And now, this was an issue. Like, after we nailed down the, the shade of green and we started moving on to the shape, I sent him a drawing. He fucking, you know, we went back and forth until we came up with the shape that we both liked. And I told him I wanted flutes on the top. And he was like, hasn't been done. It, it's idiotic to even think about it because that area is already the thinnest you know it's already the thinnest part of the whole brush because that's where you set the knot inside and so he was like it, it's idiotic to even attempt something like that and I was like can you do it for me though <laughs> uh, it, honestly there was a lot of there was a lot of back and forth and it took a lot of fucking um took a, took a lot of a uh, you know, come on, we're buddies, you know, but Andre caved and he created something like truly, 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 it, it's one of a kind, like it's never been done, I haven't seen it, and I think it's because Andre was right, like it's stupid to do something like this. Anyways, enter um, Death, again, Lancaster Razorworks. You can see it's fluted on the bottom. We got this nice pale green shade uh, with black kind of swirling throughout the uh, the body there of the handle. But if you look on top here, where the black fades into the uh, black, or the pale green fades into the black cloak, you can see that the top is also, um, there's also flutes on the top of the ferrule, creating this like absolutely one of a kind design here. Just fuck. I mean, it's insane. It's 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 fucking insane, and it's never been done. It probably won't be done again because it's just a bad idea. <laughs> but he fucking did it. Um, this thing is slender and tall. It he nailed the shade of green and the black top. The flutes are pristine. I don't know if you noticed, but the top flutes line up with the bottom flutes. It's just, it's an absolute masterpiece. You know, green's not even my favorite color, but this is one of my favorite fucking brushes. It's a masterpiece. Um, anyhow, I couldn't thank Andre enough. It was a, I was floored, floored to receive a gift like this. And I don't want to stress enough. He does not do custom, so don't fucking bug the guy. But... I was fucking floored. Anyhow, that was Death, the third horseman of the apocalypse. Fantastic brush, masterpiece. Okay, let's take another sip. Fourth horseman. Ah. 
I was on a waiting list so long that I forgot I was on it. When I, when it was my turn to be up, I had nothing in mind. Um, I've, I've knocked around a bunch of ideas and had ideas in the past that were in the vault, but when I was up to get this brush, I had nothing in mind. I wasn't, I wasn't in the brush buying phase. Um, acquiring another brush wasn't even on my mind. And then boom, you're up. What do you want? I was like, well, I do have a spot open on my four horsemen that needs to be filled. So I told him I need famine. And I tried to describe that I had the four horsemen of the apocalypse theme and famine arrived on a black horse. And famine is known to have a set of scales, like um, balances. You know how you kind of have like back in the day they would they would weigh like, you know, here's a little bit of gold coin and on the other side you have some fucking bread or 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 barley or something like that and you're like, you know, here's my day's earning, you know, can I get some fucking bread for the family and you have your scales. So famine came with scales. And so um famine had he um the, I wanted to do something in that same vein where it was like, okay, I know the brush had to be black, but how am I going to trick out a black brush, you know? And so it took a little bit of thinking, how am I going to do this? Um, the gold and silver, the valuables, like, this is how someone is going to pay for their, their um, you know, food that day or whatever, exchange services. And famine basically came at a point where you're basically, there wasn't enough, like the, the price influx caused people to starve and die. Anyhow, moving on past that, I basically said, I want a black on black brush that's black dyed wood with resin on top that has black and, or that has gold and silver swirls in the black resin. And so we jam that together and this is what I came up with. Enter the mail call. <laughs> we got our trusty gut hook here and it's in the uh, uh, bench made. Oops, that slid right out. I honestly think all these mail calls is causing my, uh, <laughs> is causing my fucking gut hook to, uh, go dull. There we go. That time we got it. I don't think anybody's gut hook has got as much use as my hat. Okay, so here comes the box. Now, on the front. Thanks so much, DK. Enjoy from Milton. So, there's your sign. Milton from Turn and Shave was the one who made this brush. Let's open this up here. We got some blue uh, paper. Pull that to the side. And then we got the um, the box here that it comes in. Turn and Shave, custom shaving brush, and then out of Chicago. So let's see, what else does he got? All right, a little bit of info for you. We got the date it was made. The knot inside is an M2 uh, hand-tied custom knot. 24 millimeters in size, 47 uh, millimeters loft. And then it says fluted inception. And then a signature on the bottom along with number 48. So let's go ahead and try to slide this out here. What do we got? Okay, that's just the two cards that fell down. <clears throat> and inside, we have the brush. I'll pull it out of its little coffin that has some more blue liner. So, enter Famine from Turn and Shave. You can already see the flutes on the bottom on the black dyed wood. Let's go ahead and wipe off the, the fuzzies. So we got the black dyed uh, burl wood down here on the bottom and then on top we have the black resin with the silver and gold 
uh, throughout. So this kind of was the this was the scales that I wanted. I I wanted it to be black on black because he arrived on a black horse, but then I wanted two different shades of black because I wanted it to represent um, the scales. You know, one scale on each side, and so basically we got the wood with the resin. Just beautiful. You could see, even though it's uh, been dyed black, you can see the uh, the different burls that kind of pop in almost like a gold or, or orange shade of their own. You can see the little eyes of the burl. Really fucking cool stuff right there. Really cool. I also kind of, <laughs> I also had to kind of impose my will a little bit on uh, Milton, but I think it was for the greater good. Sometimes you have to make artisans do shit outside of their comfort zone. And then this is a 24 millimeter hand tied knot on top that just looks adorable up there. <laughs> I don't have many 24 millimeters left that aren't synthetic. So, fucking thrilled with this thing. I mean, it's flawless in, in fit and finish. Um, from what I can tell here. He just nailed it. He nailed it. And it really... It caps off this whole Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse uh, theme here. Oh, it's just, it's just a, it's a beauty, man. It's a fucking beauty. Anyways, I could probably ramble on about this for a long fucking time. So I should stop it right here. I'll just do a one last fucking last hurrah. Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse right there fucking themed set of shave brushes. The collection is complete. Thrilled. Anyways, I know this went a little bit long. I kind of got uh, caught up in my excitement, but thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Maybe inspire some of you guys to do some crazy shit like this. Anyhow, thanks as always for watching. I appreciate the support, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.